Hi guys, welcome to the video lecture on handguns and handgun safety. Uh, I know you guys just tested on safety, so this is obviously going to be just a little bit of a review, but it, it matters a little bit more when we get into handguns. Um, two primary causes of firearms accidents are ignorance and carelessness, you guys know that. Um, and I am using my red gun uh, as, as my demo. Um, ignorance and carelessness. Uh, you can't be careless with a handgun. All right, you can't be careless with a long gun, but it, it is so much easier to be careless with a handgun. Um, that's why I do the classes the way I do. I start out with long guns. It's a whole lot more difficult to to accidentally muzzle somebody with a long gun than it is with a handgun. With a handgun, it is so, so easy. So you have to pay attention to your muzzle direction. Um, muzzle always has to be downrange. You have got to always be thinking about where your muzzle is pointed. We, we've talked about that before with the, the directions. Um, just because it's down doesn't make it safe. What is down? All right, am I upstairs? If I'm upstairs, down is not a safe direction. If I'm downstairs, up is not a safe direction. So where's this muzzle pointed and what happens if bullets come out of it? If, if it's not in a safe direction, you can want to put a hole in something or somebody you didn't mean to. Um, finger off the trigger, you guys know that. Um, handguns are ergonomically designed. They're designed so when you put them in your hand, your finger wants to lay right on the trigger. You have got to discipline yourself not to do that. When you have the handgun in your hand, you have to put it in your hand in such a way that your finger's not touching the trigger straight alongside the frame. It needs to be just like that. And then, of course, don't load the gun until you're ready to use it. Now, today we're going to be going over um, the different kinds and types of handguns of handguns okay there's two broad categories of handguns out in the world when you're out searching for a handgun there's two broad ones that you're going to find um, either the semi-automatics or the revolvers all right um, we'll start with the revolvers first the, the definition of, of a revolver is a handgun that has a rotating cylinder that contains a number of firing chambers Okay, a rotating cylinder that contains a number of firing chambers. The revolvers are the, the old style guns like you would think about either like the old cowboy guns or even up into the like the 70s, the, the, what the cops would carry in like the old Dirty Harry movies and stuff like that. A uh, rotating cylinder that has a number of firing chambers in it. That, that's what a revolver is. Um, on the revolver, we have a few different what's called action types. Okay, you have a single action, double action, and double action only action types. If you'll remember these the way I'm going to teach them to you, they'll stay kind of straight in your head, but they can get turned around if you're not careful. Um, single action, the trigger on a single action firearm performs one function. Okay, single action trigger does one thing. How many things do you think a double action trigger might do? Two, right? Okay, so single action trigger, when you pull the trigger on a single action firearm, it will drop the hammer. Okay, the hammer will go forward, hit it. Sometimes it has the firing pin, sometimes not, but it'll go forward and it'll make contact with the primer in the cartridge, which starts starts the sequence of events that, that causes the cartridge to fire. So when you pull the trigger, it drops the hammer. That's all it can do. Single action, single function, one thing. Double action. Double action does two things. When you squeeze that trigger, it will cock the hammer and then release it. Okay, so when you squeeze the trigger, it'll cock the hammer back and then drop it. Okay. Two functions. And then there's another kind in the revolver world called a double action only. And I'll explain that one when we get to it. Okay. So we'll start out with the single action because that was the, the first one made. That's the older style, the cowboy kind. So I'll get a got a single action revolver here. First thing we want to do anytime we pick up a gun is clear it. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the loading gate on this gun and we're going to well, hopefully you guys can see that this gun is unloaded. Okay, so we've cleared that gun. Now, how did I do that? So to clear a single action revolver, you need to open the loading gate and you're gonna have to cock the hammer back a certain number of clicks, uh, depends on who made the gun, until your, your cylinder frees up, okay? Initially, if the hammer's all the way down, your cylinder's locked, and if the hammer's all the way back, your cylinder's locked. So you gotta cock it back just enough that it, it frees up your cylinder. Once it's done that, then you can inspect each of the chambers to make sure the gun's unloaded. And if you wanted to load it, you could load rounds into each of the individual chambers. Once you've done that, if you've loaded it up, you want to shoot the thing. Close your loading gate. You're going to cock the hammer the rest of the way and then pull the trigger. Okay. Now, that's single function. Trigger does one thing, drops the hammer. 
this gun, you would have to cock the hammer again, pull the trigger again, so you got them all shot out. Once you've shot all of them out, you want to unload the gun, all right? And so to unload the gun, you're going to open your loading gate again. You're going to cock your hammer back until your cylinder frees up. But now because you fired it, the brass sometimes will stick inside the chamber, particularly as the gun starts getting dirtier and dirtier. It's going to stick in the chamber. And so we've got this little ejector rod, and it goes all the way through the chamber and knocks the brass out. And you'll do it again and again and again and again until you get them all out. Once you've got them all out, you want to load it again. Load, 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 load. Cock and shoot, cock and shoot. Okay. Not the quickest thing in the world anymore. Um, it can be. Uh, they it's actually fast. They, they can be pretty fast. If you if you watch some uh, um, cowboy shooting videos, some of those uh, quick draw guys, they're ridiculously fast. Okay. But the gun is limited in its capacity and it's kind of bulky and, and weighty for what you're getting out of it. But it it can be valuable to use that gun in a self-defense situation. And um, most people nowadays would tend to favor something more along the, the lines of what my, my red gun mimics. But there are games out there that people play called uh, cowboy action shooting, which I'm going to talk more in a future video about uh, different competitions and stuff. But a cow in cowboy action, basically, you dress up like a cowboy or a cowgirl, uh, boots to hat, frilly skirts, and the blue jeans, and the whole nine yards, and you go into the, the competition with a couple of six-shooter revolvers like that, uh, lever-action rifle, double-barrel shotgun, and they set up scenarios. And in the scenarios, you solve problems with a gun, okay? So you might have a, the OK connect Corral, you might have a saloon you got to kick the door in and go in and shoot the place up. They, they got scenarios that you've got to deal with with the gun. Some guys that shoot these competitions will shoot their single action revolver something in the neighborhood of uh, 500 rounds a month, sometimes up into the, the couple of thousand rounds a month, and then they'll shoot a competition. So if you put a lot of bullets through one of these guns, you're going to be fairly competent with it, at, at least familiar with it, okay? And if you shoot this gun 500 rounds a month, but you decide to carry this gun because this gun is better, okay? But you carry this gun and you only shoot it 50 rounds a year, 500 rounds a month, 50 rounds a year. Then you shoot this one in actual competitions where you're actually moving and shooting and deciding and thinking. This one you just take to the range once or twice a year. What happens if you're carrying this gun at the, the ATM and somebody tries to rob you and you decide you're gonna go to your gun? So you draw this gun out, I bet you try to drive it like this gun. All right, so you're gonna to try to drive your Glock like it's a single action revolver. Not gonna be the best end for you, all right? Yeah, granted, this is tactically superior. It's got more bullets in it and it's, you know, snazzier. But if you're better with this one, six good shots with this gun that you know how to use will beat 15 or 17 in this one that you miss half of. Because remember, you still own all them bullets wherever they go. So if this one's the one you practice with, this is the one you should carry. If you're going to carry this one anyway, you need to practice more with it. All right. There's a scale you've got to balance here. All right. It doesn't matter how you balance this scale, you have to balance it. Whichever gun you're going to practice with the most, that needs to be the one you're going to carry. Or if you're going to carry something else, that one has to be the one you practice with. However you balance that scale, it's up to you, but you've got to balance it. Single action revolver. All right. Now, any of these handguns have three basic parts. All right. I'm going to stay on the single action for just a little bit. Three basic parts to any kind of handgun. You have your frame, your barrel, and your action. All right. The frame is the base piece of the gun that everything else is attached to. All right. It's like the frame on your car your skeleton that's your root piece and everything else is around it okay or in it same with the, the the revolver you've got your frame that's kind of your base piece here and then everything else is attached to it okay your barrel is attached to it and then they call the action a, a part okay um it's kind of a military-ish term the action is a group of parts all right but it's considered one part so the action is uh all the parts 
that are concerned with loading, unloading, cocking, decocking, or firing the gun. Okay, so all the parts that are uh, control are concerned with controlling the gun are part of the action. This being a single action revolver, um, the action you have to cock the hammer because the trigger only does one thing, drops it. Okay, so parts of the action. You got your hammer, you got your trigger, you got your cylinder itself, you got your loading gate, you got your ejector rod, uh, tab and, and rod in there. Those are all parts of your action. Okay, so that is your single action revolver. Now we're going to look at a double action revolver. Double action revolver, the first thing I'm going to do is clear it so you guys there's no bullets in that thing. So same, uh, double action revolver, same thing. It's got three parts, the frame. It's right in here, it goes down inside the grip, uh, the barrel, that's just the tube the bullet goes through, and then the action, all the moving parts. Double action revolver, double action does what? Two things, cocks and releases. So when I squeeze this trigger, you'll see squeezing the trigger can cock and release. Okay, two functions of the revolver, the double action revolver trigger. Traditional double action revolver can fire in both action modes, single, double. Single, double. Now, how did I clear that initially? All right, if you'll notice on the left-hand side of the gun, there's this little, it's not really a lever, uh, a, a device, okay, that allows you to open the cylinder. And how this thing works is you push it forward. This is a Smith & Wesson, so we're gonna push this one forward and that lets us swing out the cylinder. That's our cylinder release. Depends on who made the gun, though, is how that thing works. Some of them you're going to pull to the rear, some you push in. Just depends on who made it. But this one, push forward, swing it out. Now you can check. Check and make sure it's not loaded. If you wanted to load it, you could point it down, put cartridges into the chambers one at a time, or you could have a, a speed loader device um, like this thing here. All dummies, by the way. And you put that, that in there, one click, and all your rounds go in at one time. So then when we close our cylinder, though, we want to do it in a kind of specific way. We're just going to slide the cylinder shut and, and push it till it locks. Okay, when we do that, we want to give a little bit of a roll with our thumb so that the cylinder actually locks. All right. It doesn't always. But make, you do want to make sure that it locks. If you don't do that, sometimes your cylinder will be between chambers and that'll lock up some guns. All right, so you want to make sure when you close it, you do the, the thumb roll. All right, it almost always does it kind of naturally, but you do want to put a little bit of intention into that. The one thing you do want to make sure you specifically don't do is spin that cylinder and slap it shut. Okay, and I know we've seen that done on movies galore, especially the old school stuff back in the 80s and earlier. Don't ever do that. Okay, it's very bad for the gun. Right? If you spin that cylinder like that and slap it shut, uh, if it's your gun, you you probably broke it. If it's if you went to a gun store and you done it, you're probably going to leave with a brand new broke gun. Okay, so yeah, don't do that. A um, couple things about this double action revolver. Uh, if you have ever shot one of these, you'll know shooting at double action is not not the funnest thing. All right? And if you'll notice, when I pull the trigger on this thing, look what happens mechanically. Okay, The hammer is cocking, the cylinder is turning, and I'm doing all of that with my trigger finger. Okay, My trigger finger is what I'm also using to control the marksmanship of the gun, which we learned that earlier in class and I'll re reiterate it in a, free, a future lesson. Trigger finger is hugely important when it comes to accuracy on any firearm. But now we're asking the trigger finger to do a lot of mechanical stuff on top of marksmanship stuff. A lot of people, if you have one of these guns, when you take it to the range, watch what happens when I cock this hammer. Okay, when I pull the hammer back, watch what it does to the trigger and watch what it did to the cylinder, okay? So it staged the trigger and the, the cylinder. So when we pull this back, now when I pull the trigger, I got a very, very crisp, light, short travel on the trigger. Makes it much, much nicer whenever you're shooting it, accuracy-wise, target shooting-wise. So what people will wind up doing if they're not careful when they go to the range with a gun like this, They'll go and they'll shoot a few shots with a double action, and that really just gets to be in 
not as accurate as they would like and it's fatiguing so what they'll do is they'll find themselves cocking the hammer and shooting that way because it's more accurate um it's a trap remember how your teacher in school always used to tell you if you're cheating you're only cheating yourself this gun you're definitely doing that all right if you're cheating you're cheating yourself how if I take this gun to the range, this is my home defense gun, okay? I'm going to keep this in a nightstand or whatever. I'm going to keep it in the glove, of the glove box of the, the truck. And that's the gun I'm going to go to if the bad guys come. But when I'm on the range shooting it, I shoot it single action because that's the only way I can really do much um, accuracy work with it. How much better do you think I'm going to be with this gun if I'm at home in the dark and I'm scared? Do you think you're going to be able to hit better with this thing that way than you would have the other way? So if you're going to carry this gun, you're going to use it in some kind of a self-defense scenario, you're going to be pulling the trigger double action. So you need to be practicing with it double action when you go to the range. That's one of the reasons we have that, that other style called double action only. Okay, Double action only, as the name implies, can only be fired double action. Typically, or one of the easiest methods they make a double action on the gun is they just cut this spur off of the hammer. Okay, so your gun would look more like that. All right, the spur would be missing. Um, some of them are more elaborate than that. They, they have the hammers concealed completely and stuff like that. But just in general, to make one, you can just take a Dremel tool and bzz, cut that, that spur off of there, and you would effectively made a double action only gun because it's really difficult to cock the hammer at that point. There's another advantage to it. <clears throat> if you were going to use this gun in any kind of a self-defense scenario, look at that spur. Okay, that spur, the way that thing is pointing. If I were to try to draw this gun out of a nightstand, glove box, pocket, purse, holster even, that hook is pointing in the wrong direction. Okay, when I'm pulling that out of the, the, the glove box of my car, I'm going to pull the whole dash out of the car because that thing's going to hook everything. All right, so it doesn't make for a really good profile if you're trying to draw this gun out of something. But if you cut that spur off of there, much smoother profile then. So whenever you try to pull the gun out of something, it makes it nicer. Okay, so we shot this gun, um, shot all the shots out of it. This one's a little nicer than the single action revolver. So, okay, so to, to reload, I've just got to hit the cylinder release, swing the cylinder out, and bam. Okay, one hit of the thumb, drop all the brass out. Turn it down, throw in some more cartridges, slap it shut, we're ready to go. Remember, don't spin it, don't slap it too hard, just enough to make it work. Give it a little lock with the thumb, you're ready to go. All right, so I'm going to switch over to another video on, on the Semi-Auto. That's it for the revolvers, and we'll see you in a bit.